Okay. Hi everyone. Um, for those that don't know me, my name's Tim, and I'm all the way from Australia, Sydney in particular. I am the uh, convener of the Sydney Joomla User Group. I've run that since 2012, and I'm the coordinator of Sydney Joomla Day, which is an annual event. Uh, this year is on the 11th and 12th of October. If anyone's interested in coming to Sydney. And last year I wrote the book uh, Learning Joomla 3 Extension Development, which is published by Packet Publishing. Um, this book focused more on the traditional uh, development of Joomla. It didn't cover framework and framework at all, so if you're expecting that, don't get the book. <laughs> so today we're talking about framework on framework, or F FOF. Framework and Framework is a rapid application uh, development framework for Joomla. It's not standalone, it's very integrated into the, the Joomla core, so you can't just run it uh, as a standalone um, application like using the um, Joomla framework. You have to use uh, the Joomla CMS, it's very integrated with the CMS. There's the aim not to break backwards compatibility, so uh, code that you write now should continue to work throughout the um, the full Joomla 3 series, so Joomla 3.4, Joomla 3.5, there, there shouldn't be any big issues there. So Nicholas, who's sitting at the front here, he's the creator of Framework and Framework, um, but he's not the only one who works on it now. There's over 31 contributors to the, the GitHub repository, and, and that's growing, which is really good. Um, I think back in October there was about 23 contributors, so it's, it's a, a good growth. So the reasons why you'd use Framework and Framework as opposed to the normal Joomla development methods is that you can create things very quickly and with a lot less code than you would otherwise normally be able to do. And since Joomla 3.2, Framework on Framework, FOF, has been included in the core. But now it's all changed. Um, the core version of Framework and Framework has been forked to F0F, and now Nicholas is maintaining that independently from the, the core of Joomla. And if you want to find out all the details about that, you can read that forum post. So the difference between F0F and FOF is um, basically the the zeros, uh, the, yeah, the zero has been changed, uh, O has been changed to a zero, and um, yeah, th there's not a lot of difference between the current version of F0F compared to FOF. Uh, there's a few improvements, but um, essentially the functionality is the same. So the version of FOF in the core is 2.2.1, and that's likely to be frozen and, and remain in that version until the end of the Joomla 3 series. And at that point in time, uh, when we start Joomla 4, it's probably going to be taken out completely. Uh, F0F, the current version is 2.3.0. And um, the difference between using FOF and F0F is you need to include the F0F in the installation package for your extension. Because now that it's that isn't in the core, when you install it, you need to make sure that F0F is on the site. So yeah, pretty much covered that. So it, it's recommended that you now use F0F because that's the currently maintained version. Any new bug fixes or improvements are going to be added to the F0F. So um, unless you just want to use it as is, um, you'd go for the F0F. So F0F isn't dying, it's, it's actively <coughs> maintained, even though it's now not part of the core. It's um, yeah, still very much maintained and, and growing. Um, Nicholas is also working on another framework, a F uh, AWF, which is going to be a standalone framework that doesn't tie in so much with Joomla. Um, but I'm sure we'll hear about more about that in the coming months. So he's got a September coming soon, so hopefully we see something cool soon. So some key dates with Framework and Framework. Um, Nicholas has been using it in his extensions for quite some time and he was kind enough to release it to the public in May 2012. 
so people could start using it in their own third-party components. Uh, in June 2012, Bootstrap and jQuery was added, and that's particularly handy if you're making extension to support Joomla 2.5, which doesn't have the Bootstrap and jQuery. Um, in March 2013, the XML views were added. Instead of having to create lots of PHP files, you can just create XML files, which do a lot of the work now, and really simplify and reduce the amount of code that you have to create. And a lot of the stuff we'll be looking at today will be these XML views. In September 2013 is when it was added to the core of Joomla, and now in May, the FCRF fork has happened, so um, the version that's in the core will just stay there. Um, some of the benefits of using framework and framework, there's, there's a lot less code, and in general, if you're writing less code, there should be less bugs, and it should be easier to maintain. Uh, it's also going to be quicker to develop because you're not having to create as many files, and uh, you can create some uh, prototypes quite quickly. There's also a lot of automagic stuff that happens in Framework and Framework. Things that happen uh, automatically, if you're following the standards, then uh, you get all this functionality for free that uh, just happens without you having to, to do anything. So the system requirements for FCRF is Joomla 2.5.6 or greater and PHP 5.3.3. It uses convention over configuration, so the naming uh, is very important. The name of tables, the name of uh, fields, the names of uh, views and um, the files. Uh, you need to follow the standards, otherwise you just make your life very difficult for yourself um, and it's a lot more extra work that you have to do to make it work. So some of the key features of Framework of Framework is that you can reuse views. So if you've got a view, say, in the back end of a component and you want to use that view in the front end, you can load up that same view. Um, or if you've got um, yeah, another view in the front end that you need to load parts of, you can load. Um, you can do media uh, file overrides. So in uh, Joomla, you all know about template overrides, how you can um, create files in your template folder that can override the views for modules and components. Um, but what this allows you to do is override the CSS files and the JavaScript files, and I think also the images. So if uh, someone downloads your extension and they want to change the style of it to, to suit their site, they can go ahead, uh, create this media override for the CSS file, put in their own customization in there, and then each time they upgrade their extension, they don't have to reapply those changes because that overridden version is the one that's going to be used on their site, and it won't get uh, uh, deleted when you install the new version. Same with JavaScript files. If you don't like um, the JavaScript that the component's using, you can go in and, and write your own or add some extra stuff. And um, yeah, all, all that happens in the template folder. Um, normally, you do the HTML folder within your template for the template overrides. But what you do instead is you create a media folder and you put those overrides within there. Um, <coughs> it's also got automatic JSON and CSVs in the views. so any view at all, you can just type uh, and format equals JSON and that'll um, output th that view in JSON format. And same with CSV, you can just put and format equals CSV and that'll output that view as CSV. So very handy for extracting data out of there or linking in with other applications. Okay, there's XML-based views and uh, you can have XML-only views or you can have um, PHP only views, or you can have a mixture of both. So th there's a lot of flexibility there as to um, what you want to do. The XML view only is going to be the least amount of code, um, but depending on what you need to do, sometimes you need to use a combination of both, or you may prefer just to do it completely in PHP in the, the old fashioned sort of way. There's things called magic fields, and th these are fields that you just add to your database table and then that functionality just automatically happens in, in the component. Um, so here's a few of them, for example, but some things to be aware of is the naming of these fields is a bit different to the core Joomla naming of, of these fields. So <laughs> in Joomla 1.5, it was called published and then it became a state field. Uh, in a, a FOF component, it's called enabled. So essentially it's the same thing, but it's um, just 
different naming standards. Same with the creator field. Uh, in, instead of the, the date created being called created, it's called created on. And um, yeah, locked by instead of checked out, locked on instead of checked out time. It's um, a lot more uh, readable for someone who isn't familiar with the um, Juma terminology so they can understand what those fields actually mean just by the name of them. So we're going to look at an example so we can see some of these features of FOSS demonstrated. Um, the example that I've created is a, a really simple timesheet application and basically it's just a, a simple form where you can put in um, the name of the person, the, the, the week that you're doing the timesheet for and put in how many hours they worked each of the days. It does a little calculation and then you can save the record. You can delete it and um, edit it, that <coughs> sort of thing. So it's, it's quite a simple component. You can see all the source code um, that I'll be demonstrating today uh, on GitHub. So uh, all these slides will be available online too, so you can access all this. So we'll start out looking at the database. And this is uh, the first place where the, um, the naming conventions are, are very, very important. You can see there that the um, tables using the component, they start out with the, the database prefix and then the name of the component. So in this case, timesheet. Then uh, after that, we have the, the name of the view, and it's the, the list view, the, the plural version that we have here. So in this case, items. Now, normally the, the first field in your database would be an ID field, but um, Framework and Framework actually has a slightly different format for this ID field. You have the component name underscore the view underscore ID. So it's the singular view name, so in this case, item. So y you can see there where it's items up here, but it's item down here. So that's something to be aware of that, that you make sure you're using the right um, pluralization there. And yeah, obviously the primary key is still that ID field. Um, the actual field they've created in this component has a lot more fields, but I've just sort of simplified it there just for the slide so that you could actually read it and, and, and see this point here. So when the component loads up initially, um, there's an entry point file that it, it loads up. And, and this is in, um, if you're looking at the back end, it's in the administrator components, the component name, and then the component name.php. So in this case, timesheet.php. Um, essentially what this does is it checks to make sure that FOF is installed. If it is, that's great. If it isn't, it'll fail and, and it can't run the component. So if it is installed, then uh, we run the dispatcher. So the only thing you need to customize in here is the name of your component in uh, down the bottom there. So in this case, com timesheet. Then we have a dispatcher file, which is just an XML file sitting in the back end. Um, you can either use this XML file as a dispatcher, or you can create a PHP dispatcher file, or you can do a combination of both, depending on, on what you're trying to do. Uh, in this case, I'm just defining the default view. So when you uh, click on the component from the component menu, it'll take you to the cPanels view as the, the default view. In this example, I've actually created a PHP file for the dispatcher as well. And the reason why I've done that is to load a keeper strapper, which is um, an extra library that uh, adds on with FOF and it um, loads up jQuery, it loads up Bootstrap, and uh, it um, does the, the tabs across the top uh, instead of the, the menu down the left that you'd normally see in a, a Joomla 3 component. And it, it just um, makes things a lot easier. So if you're using FOF, you, chances are you'd probably use a keeper strapper in, in your component as well. So then we have the installation XML file, which is um, what defines all the files in the component. And if you're familiar with normal Joomla component development, it's pretty much exactly the same. Um, yeah, it's just the, uh, the author, the version, the component name, all that sort of stuff. Um, then the front end, all the files and folders that are included in that. The back end, all the files and folders, um, where the installation um, SQL files are, that sort of thing. So th there's really nothing specific to, to FOF in there. Same with the config file that we use to define all the um, menu item uh, parameters. That's 
exactly the same as you'd do in a, a normal Joomla component, uh, nothing fancy there at all. And the access file, which controls all the permissions that are available to this component, um, once again, it's the same as you do in a, a normal Joomla component. There's nothing FOTH sp specific in there. Okay, then we have view files. So there's three main types of view files. There's a browse file, a, a, a browse view, a, an edit view, or a read view. And the naming of these is very important. Um, if you get the names wrong, then you'll get all sorts of weird errors. Uh, so it can either be a PHP file or an XML file or both. Um, in this case for the browse, it's a default.php. Um, or if you're using an XML file, form.default.xml. Uh, and you can see there that the edit is um, form.form.xml and the read is form.item.xml. So you need to be aware of what type of view it is you're creating so that you use the right naming standards there. So just taking a, an example of a, a list view, this is um, just showing all the, the records of when uh, people have entered timesheets. It's just showing some uh, columns with, with the data that they've entered. And this is entirely generated by an XML file. There's no PHP at all um, to create this view. So if we have a look at that, um, because it's a list view, it's in the uh, items folder, the, the plural version of the, the items. And you see the TMPL and then there's a form.default.xml. Um, in a traditional Joomla component, you'd normally have the view.html.php um, file as well in the items folder. And you'd normally have a controller file, you'd normally have a model, um, probably a, a model form and the XML file in there. And you'd have um, maybe a table as well. So quite a lot of files just to create one view. In this case, you can just do it with a single XML file. And the, the format of this XML file is pretty simple. It's basically um, you define the header and then you um, you define the field, which is like the item rows within that. Um, so you can see there that this is just a, a title field and we've got the link so that when you click on the title field, it'll open up that particular item. You, you can see there it's passing through the, the ID of the item so it knows which one to open. So things like um, making the column sortable is really, really easy in, in FOF. You just um, sortable equals true to the header, and it just does all that for you. Um, if you're adding in uh, view filters or um, searches for the, the fields, it's all really, really simple, just um, adding in uh, little bits in the header of the, the XML file. In a traditional Joomla extension, you'd have to go into the model and um, adjust the SQL query and, and do all, a lot of hard work just to implement, uh, say, a view filter. Um, but FOF just makes that sort of thing m remarkably easy. So then we'll have a look at a, a simple form. Um, this is um, pretty much created with an XML file. So you can see there, because it's a form, it's the singular version of the view, so in this case, item and it's just the form.form.xml. And this is a, a cut down version of, of the, the form. Um, basically, it's just an XML file and you've got all the fields. Oops, I must go back. Um, so th there's a title <coughs> field. Um, you'd obviously have a lot more fields in, in that form, but um, yeah, it's too much to fit on this slide here. But this is um, very similar to what you'd see in a, a normal Joomla component in the model forms and then the XML file in there. And that's all you need to do to create that view. You can just create that one XML file and FOF does everything else for you. It's um, really, really simple. In all the um, Akiba products, you notice the little icons in the cPanel view there. So I just sort of include a little bit here to demonstrate how to create those. Um, it's just basically a, a div with um, the link that when you click on it, that it goes to. Um, the class here, which is used to define which icon is loaded up in here. And the, the text is the, the, the title list timesheet categories in this case. And then there's just a bit of CSS code that we load up um, that defines the image that's loading into that cPanel icon. So it's really easy to create a, a nice consistent interface there. One of the really cool things about FOF is that you can create version-specific views. So 
if you want to make um, Joomla 2.5 do something a bit different to Joomla 3, um, or let's say you wanted to make Joomla 3.1 um, users see something slightly different to Joomla 3.2 users, they may see an extra column or, or something like that, um, you can do that really easily. Uh, you can create multiple files within the view, and um, depending on the naming of it, it, it knows which um, file to load up. So you can see here an example with the uh, ordering field in Joomla 3, because we've got the drag and drop ordering, you normally have it on the far left. In Joomla 2.5, it's more of a standard to have it across to the, the right there. So um, we've got the, the form.default.j3.xml, which loads up whenever you're using Joomla 3. Or if you're installing this component on Joomla 2.5, it loads up this form.default.xml instead. Um, just because I wanted to demonstrate um, how to create another view, it's an yeah. th there's no reason why you couldn't use the Joomla categories. Yeah, so um, FOF will automatically search for the, the view template and um, based on the, the version number. So if you're targeting Joomla 2.5, you can be specific and say um, the exact version. So um, l let's say we're looking at Joomla 3.3. Um, you could have default.j33.php, um, or you can be more general and just target the entire Joomla 3 series with a default.j3.php. Um, and basically, if none of these match, it, it falls back to the default.php. So whatever you have in there, um, that's what's going to be used if, if none of these other rules match. So Besides having the XML only view, you can also combine this with PHP. Um, here's a, a simple example of, of where you might want to do that. The um, drop down list, you may want to style it and um, make it look a, a bit nicer. So, what we can do to do that is we create, we've got the form.form.xml file there already. We create a form.php file within that same folder. And that uh, PHP file loads first, and then that PHP file loads the XML file. So you can see here that it's just a normal PHP file. We load up the, um, the chosen select, uh, which uh, allows it to uh, style that select input field. And then we um, render the form, which is basically loading up that XML file. So you can uh, add in whatever code you like before or after it. If you wanted to maybe put a copyright footer on the view, you could do that underneath there or um, if you wanted something above the view, you can add that in there. So um, you've got a lot of flexibility as to, to how you use it. The toolbar buttons are, are handled really nicely in a, a file called toolbar.php, which is in the back end. Um, basically, for each of the uh, different views and, and the methods, whether it's browse or edit or um, whatever, you can create a, a function that um, you can add in your, your extra buttons. So in this case, we're adding in a back button. We're loading up the standard on browse buttons, and then um, we're adding in the, the back button as well. This same toolbar.php file is used for the front end toolbar, but there's an extra line that you need to add in if you're targeting a front end view, which I'll get to later on. So here's just a quick example of um, exporting the, the view to a CSE. CSV file, uh, you've basically got the normal view and then at the end you just append that end format equals CSV, hit enter, and then it comes up with the, the CSV file to save, so it's really nice the way it does that. And same with the JSON format, you just add the end format equals JSON to the, to the um, view and yeah, there you can output in JSON format. Yeah. I've never tried to disable it, um, Nicholas. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is something that you can So now we'll have a bit of a look at the front end. Um, the front end, we can create a, a bare minimal front end with only just a few files. Um, 
in this case, I've created a, an item view here, and it's loading a default.php file. And within that, we're just loading up the view from the back end. So you can see there that's load any template. We're looking at the admin section and the com timesheet component, the item view, and we're looking at the form within that view. So that's going to load up that XML file from the, the back end. Um, instead of us having to, to copy and paste it into the front end there, we can just load it directly. And the advantage of using this load any template instead of doing a, a PHP include or require statement is that all these views, um, they respect the template overrides. So you can still create template overrides for the front end and um, yeah, when you're using it like this. So uh, another thing you'll notice <coughs> on the front end is this metadata.xml. It's um, similar to a normal Joomla component. Uh, that's where you define um, the menu item, the, the name and stuff that's going to appear when you create a, a menu item for that view. You could also um, yeah, d disable it and make it not as appear as a menu item if you want as well. So not only can you load views from the back end, you can also load them from the front end. So you just change that admin to site and then you could load up a view from, from the front end. And it's actually smart enough that um, if you say um, site there and it's looking for that view in the, the front end, if it can't find it in the front end, it'll then go ahead and look in the back end automatically. And if there's a view of that same name, it'll just use that um, magically. So as things like that, um, FOF just does really well. So this is the, the list view in the front end, um, just demonstrating a different way of, of loading up the, the form. In this case, we're just doing the get rendered form which loads up the XML file. And Foth is smart enough to realize that the XML file doesn't exist in the front end, so it looks in the back end, finds the, um, the view with the same name, and, and loads it up from there. Um, or you could copy that XML file from the back end, put it into the front end if you wanted it to be slightly different. Uh, yeah, depends what you're trying to do there. So when it comes to the front end toolbar, really easy to implement. You just need to go into the toolbar.php file, which is in the back end, and you create the um, what type of view it is. So in this case, on item add. So when you're adding a new item, and this line here is is what allows the f uh, toolbar to appear in the front end. This dot render front end buttons equals true. If that line isn't there, then um, yeah, the, the toolbar just won't appear on the front end. Um, but besides that, it just does everything else automatically. You can uh, add extra buttons like you can in the back end. <coughs> um, yeah. Um, FOF loads all the language files automatically. So what it does is it loads up the English file first and then it'll load up the, um, the language for that site and override the English um, things. But it, it just um, falls back to the English ones if, if it can't find that language file for that that site has to find. But you don't need to add any code at all to load language files, it just it all happens automatically. So I was talking earlier about the media overrides where you can override the CSS and JavaScript. And so the way you do that is uh, within you create a media folder within your template and um, copy the files in there. So in this case, it would be um, media slash com underscore timesheet slash CSS slash backend dot CSS would um, override the, the, the CSS file for, for the back end um, or, or the front end uh, would be the front end dot CSS. Okay, so installation script. Um, this is one area where F0F has actually um, massively improved it from FOF and it's much simpler to create this installation file now. Um, with only just a few lines, you can uh, allow your component to in, uh, check the uh, version of F0F that's currently installed. If it's an older version, it can install the newer version. If it's already the correct version, it just doesn't install that again. And same with the Kiba strapper. So if I was to install this component over the top again a second time, all that you'd see is this line saying here the timesheet's installed because the F0F and the Kiba strapper would already be installed from that previous time. Um, if you're using any of the Kiba extensions on your site, you probably already have these installed anyway. Excuse me. 
Yeah, so the installation script is, is really easy now. So just having a look at the, all the files together for this component, um, you can see there that there's the back-end folder, which you could also call admin. It's up to you what sort of naming stand you use there. And you've got the front-end folder. Um, F0F is the framework on framework that we're including in our installation package. Strapper is the Kiba strapper. You've got the language folder, media folder, uh, the installation XML file there, the um, installation script. And so if you're looking at the, um, the back end and front end, you can see there that uh, it, the back end doesn't have any controls, doesn't have any models, doesn't have any tables. You can add them if you want to, if you're trying to do anything fancy. But if you're just uh, doing a simple component, you don't need to do that. Foth just handles that automatically. Um, it, it just generates them and you don't need to, to code that. Um, in this case, I've created a controller in the front end because when you fill out the timesheet and save it, it'll take you to a thank you page view um, that's, yeah, thank you for filling out the timesheet sort of thing instead of taking you back to the list view, which it would do by default. So that's the only reason why I've included a controller in here. Um, you could completely leave that out. Uh, the dispatcher as well, you could leave that out if you wanted to. The reason why I've included it there is because if you install this on Joomla 2.5, um, we want to force it to load a Kiva strapper so that it can load up the, the jQuery and um, which we're using in, in the component for the calculation of the, um, the total times. So, yeah, just looking at the, the back end specifically, you can see there there's the, um, w within the, the SQL folder, you've got the install MySQL, install the SQL, exactly the same as you do a, a normal Joomla component. You can have the update SQL file <coughs> as well. Um, yeah, y you can support multiple databases as well. You don't have to just limit it to MySQL. Um, looking at the, the views, we've got the, the category view, and you can see there it's demonstrating the um, loading the different view in the different Joomla versions. Um, we've got the category form there, which is a, a mix of XML and PHP. Um, we've got the cPanel view, which is what loads up default with those icons that you, you click on. Uh, the item view, which is the, the edit form, and that's a mix of PHP and, and XML. And then we've got the item list view, which is just an XML only view there. Then looking at the front end, so um, there's the controller I mentioned that redirects you to the thank you page when you save the, the item. And then in the views, we've just got the, the item, the items, and the thank you view. Uh, and so pretty much all the work for these views here is done in the back end. We're just loading those back end views there. But you could create your own front end views if you wanted to. So it's a, a fairly simple component, this one. Um, you've got the language files. This is pretty much the same as you do with a normal Joomla component. You've got the, um, the, the back end files. You've got the .sys.ini for all the menus and stuff like that. And you've got the front end .ini file as well for front end languages. And the media, um, this installs in the media folder of your site and then slash com underscore timesheet slash CSS whatever. Um, and so there's all the, the CSS files we're using and the JavaScript file that does the calculations of those times when you add in the, the days of the week. Um, we've also got the icons that it's loading up here too. And I, I'll just do a really, really quick demo because we're sort of a bit short on time here. Um, I've got a blank site here, and I'll just quickly install the extension. So there you can see it's installing the extension, the framework and framework, or oh F0F and the Kiba strapper. Um, if we go into the, the timesheet thing, it goes to the cPanel view, and you can either go into categories or timesheet. So you can add in a, a category in here. Uh, test, whatever. <coughs> so you can see it's all functioning like a, a normal Joomla component, but it's a fraction of the code that we've used to create this. Uh, and you can see it's calculating it down the bottom here. It's just loading a, a jQuery there. Save that. And for the front end, we can add in some front end views. Add a new 
timesheet. So the front end here, um, we're applying different CSS to this front end just to make these hours line up in a line there, um, but pretty much the same. Whatever. And then when we save it, it takes us to the thank you page. Um, one interesting thing here is that you see, w um, I can only see the save and close and the cancel button. If I log in with someone with a bit more permission, you can see the entire toolbar there. So that it's all um, based on the, the permissions in the component as to what you can see there. And then we've got the, the list with all the submitted timesheets. We can go in there, we can edit them and um, yeah, delete them and all that sort of thing. So all that with not a lot of code. So that's about it I was going to show you today, but um, I encourage you to go to the GitHub and, and download this component, have a look at the source code, have a play around, and um, yeah, if you've got any questions, just get in touch and hopefully I can point you in the right direction. So some other resources you might be interested in, the um, actual FCRF is on GitHub in the, in the Ukiba section there, and uh, there's also... Um, on the Akiba backup site, you can download the um, the package of FCRF if you didn't want to get it off GitHub, if you just want to grab it off there, the, the current version. And there's a really good uh, developer guide uh, that's on Nicholas's site, and uh, that goes through in a lot of detail um, how it all works and, uh, yeah, a lot more than I've covered today. There's also a Google group that you can go to and, and ask any questions you like about FOF, and, and Nicholas is really responsive in there and gets back to us really quickly so yeah it's a really good resource and that's about all I had to show you today so any questions cool okay we'll finish up then